Yeah. Goose is trying to swim back across the lake. We don't have to bring all of them, but. Alright. Well, give me some animal There's no tie. And we are off. We got a perfect day. It's calling for some rain, potentially thunderstorms, because there's been a real heat wave uh, for this time of year. Black flies are out. It is May, and we are chasing trout, going for specks, going into interior Algonquin. Nothing crazy distance-wise, because we wanted to uh, leave some more time for fishing. Um, we got my dog North here, you can hear him whining. Got my buddy Ryan paddling in the bow, and I'm paddling my new 18-foot Novacraft Prospector and Tough Stuff Expedition. And this is the canoe's maiden voyage. North, lie down. North, lie down. Bad dog, lie down. North is trying to tip the boat. Um, and uh, we also have my cousin Brad, my buddy Will, and none other than my brother Ted Baird here. Um, so we're stoked. Uh, we got uh, three portages today. We're basically doing like a yo-yo. We're going in and coming back. But we're trying to get into a backcountry lake that I've never been in before that's supposed to have some good fishing um, for brook trout. It's going to be about, um, you know, I don't know, 800 meter portage to get in there. But uh, I've heard good things. So, North, come here. North, leave it. Leave it. North, leave it. Come here, North. Come here. North. North is being a pain in the ass because there's other dogs in the canoes in front of us. <laughs> and he wants to go and play with them. So he's very interested in that. Oh, yeah, I'm just snagged in weeds. Oh, it's Ted. You got Ted? No, Ted grabbed my line and made me think it was a fish. Oh, like, oh it could be and then I started doing it. No, I said it could be. I thought it was maybe snagged in weeds. Oh, it took you a while to realize something was there. Way better. Can you dog immediately? Oh, There's fish in here, guys. Look. What are they? It's also good sometimes to cast upriver because the fish face upriver. Yeah, they look for things coming down. How is that, guys? Oh, I'm struggling. <laughs> Why isn't Ted helping? Because I'm scaring my shit. Yeah, but the oh, dog. <sighs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, this looks like a honey hole here, though, eh? Yeah. yeah. All right, you want to go yeah. grab yours? There's one. That? Yeah. Nice gimbal. Keep. Oh, small. That looks small.
We'll got a keeper. There's one. Perch. Keeper. Nah. No? I don't want to keep up this little perch, do you? <laughs> perch, perch in these lakes don't, I don't think they get very big though, right? No, there's no jumbos. Me and Will each caught one. Too bad we can't stay there a little longer, but we got to get to our destination. We still have a little ways to go and a couple not fun portages in between. So anyways, pretty fun. Pretty fun to get on the board, promising for sure. Like the lighter action rod, the more you catch, but you're less likely to catch a big one, you know? Well, we got a uh, portage coming up here around a waterfall, but this will put us into uh, North T. So this is the one of the lakes we're going to, um, but it uh, shouldn't be too tough of a portage, but it sure ain't too easy. Not really dangerous because there's kind of a big rock blocking the portal to the waterfall. So it's not really somewhere where you'd, you'd wash over unless you really deserved it. And it's an easy enough portage trail too, so. Probably. Like the They're heavy. Super nice. Trip number one. About 250 meter here. But uh it's kind of like a highway, so hopefully it doesn't feel so bad. That's oh, longer than I remember it being. Hey, Will. Yeah. What'd you do with that fish? Is it in my boat? One, eh? 18 feet long, durable white water material, but only 17, uh, 72 pounds. So pretty easy to carry, really, no problem. Tom Waddy was only 20. How did these guys die? Must have been a pretty good guy. Yeah, it's got a mow moss and mow moss and new and everything. We're still about a few things, yeah. That's like, the, that's like the sailor, the sailor. Every time they stop at a port, they take something out of the That's right. And we're rough. <laughs> uh, Ryan's, Ryan, the ladies are like the, the tattoos and the semi, semi in shape body. And like he has a fish too. Yeah? Whitey, whitey. Oh, it looks bassy. No, it's staying down. Looks like it wants to jump. Don't, oh, don't reel against your drag. Don't don't let Should it take the drag. The Should I go out there and get yeah, him? Go get it. No no no. Yeah. You got it. It's a biggie too. Oh, it's a fatty smallie bud, like four pounder. Oh shit. 
Whatever. That's like a three pounder for sure. Well, more than more that. Than that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Let's get him it released real quick. That's a nice fish. That's four pounds for sure. Oh, it's up there anyway. That's over three, anyways, we'll call it. Ah. That's a football. All right. It's like 200 meters and then nothing and then like 450. Fucking goddamn water. Came out to see you. Too small Oh, and then you'll have them forever, right? You guys seen that? You'd want to take it in the war as opposed to. Right. That is like. That's a blue hair and rookery. Switch sides, Ryan. Switch sides. Let's go check it out. Let's go check out that island. Uh, I just cleaned up that uh, little brook trout with uh, my Cold Steel AD15 light folding knife, razor sharp, and it's cool because you can close it with one hand. It's got um, the mechanism here, this little piece lifts. See how there's kind of a gap in the handle? This piece here lifts up and that's what locks the blade there. So you can literally go like that, close it up with one hand. Pretty cool. I like clip knives quite a bit. Um, but uh, I also like the quick accessibility of a sheath knife too, so um, But uh, this trip, yeah, I'm trying this out and I'm really liking it Check out this toad. You don't usually see toads in the water He's playing dead right now It's different Big hill. We are uh, on the trail into this backcountry lake. It's off the main canoe route system. <sighs> I think there's going to be some good trout fishing in there. We got to work to get to it. Thank <sighs> you. 
Break. 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 Oh. Oh. That's a big hill. These are uh, pileated woodpecker holes. Huge woodpecker. Usually make the holes lower to the ground and then as the tree rots, these holes become habitat for nesting birds such as screech owls. Sometimes you'll see, here's an example. I don't know. And sometimes you'll see a squirrel here cached these mushrooms in here. All right? So see how dry those are? So squirrels in the fall will pick mushrooms and cache them in pileated woodpecker holes, just like we see here. Usually that's a flying squirrel. They're nocturnal that does that. But after they are cached, the uh, pileated woodpeckers won't come back to the hole. And so they then leave the hole and that is what makes the perfect um, storm, if you will, for that to become a nest. So the combination between flying squirrels and pileated woodpeckers make really good nesting habitat for screech owls. That's so funny. I was like talking about how squirrels cache stuff in and then I find old squirrel cache right there. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna put that in a bit better spot for the squirrels. But that is really bone dry. You know, and it's funny, squirrel put it here and I'm thinking why? But I'm looking and there's a lot more light on that bottom hole, a lot more sunlight than that bottom hole than that top hole. So I guess the squirrels are pretty smart because they know which holes. Got some trilliums here too. This is Ontario's provincial flower. Most of the time they're white. Don't worry, Jim, they can edit out the huffing and puffing. Whew. Jim, you missed your dog's first swim. Yeah! North swam across. North swam across. Amazing, North just had his first swim, I missed it. He's never Ooh. swum because he's born in the winter. And he just swam across this pond here, which is kind of cool. Did he do okay? Amazing. So North swam. That's great. I feel better now. This is a. You can tell this is a spring-fed like headwater lake because of the green color to it. Pretty cool. Yeah. British bulldog. Ted's got one. Goose is trying to swim back across the lake. <laughs> Almost dumped. Well, here we have our boat. And it's actually almost harder because we have to reload the boat and literally paddle right over to there for the last 250 meters. 
but it kind of gave us a bit of a break and then we could do the portage in stages. Your dog portage itself. Yeah, that's always nice. Cool. Yeah, I noticed this canoe, it's more like a voyageur canoe, like it takes a couple strokes before you start moving, you know? Momentum? Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's freaking cozy, dude. It's, it's not very chippy at all. No. North, you went for a swim, bud. Good job. Good job. A little beast. Good job. We're there. Yeah. North got a stick from the water and went swimming for his first time ever today. I have a few group beverages in here. I know. <laughs> that I want to keep cold um, and uh, just some food I have that I want to keep cold a steak. It's pretty hot today. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it in this bag. This is where I keep my mess kit. And I'm going to add a rock to this and I'm going to sink it in that ice cold water and we're going to have some nice cold drinks. Big Agnes. Ryan, buddy, look at that. What a treat. Yes, Ryan. <laughs> Holy <laughs> It's done, dude. Amazing. It's a done deal. We just gotta cook it. That is epic, man. That's gotta get done over the fire for sure. You guys ever been to Copa Cabana or Rogers Steakhouse? Yeah. Weren't there on my, on my, yeah, yeah, man. I went there on my crazy. What, what, what do you yeah, got? They have on Friday and Saturday nights. They have a couple of Montreal. Yeah, tits out. Yeah. Sometimes I like. Baby. I want to get that one closer, Jim. That fatty dude. One of your raffles. Good boy, in the boat. Good boy, in the boat. Come on. Come on, North. Good boy, good boy. North, 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 good boy. North, good boy, in the boat. In the boat. In the boat. In the boat. Come on. In the boat. 
Good boy! Good boy! You got a net? No, I'm just gonna boat it like this. On the board! That's one. Keep it. Oh! oh my god, I just lost it. Keeping everything. So there we go, little one. We've decided we're just keeping everything. I know that's kind of small, but I'm telling you, these little ones are delicious. So I'll keep a bunch of, uh, if I keep another couple little ones and I catch a big one, I'll let the big one go. Getting some stormy conditions going on here. Over there doesn't look too isolated. Huh? If that's a rain, a wall of rain coming towards us. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think it is. Look at this bird. Is that Holy oh, shit, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. You know, like you're waiting in the pearly gate. It's, it's, it's a risk, like I said. There is a bit of a lot of skew. Well, the chance of getting struck by lightning or like winning the lottery, well. Consider the amount of. Actually, you're more likely to uh, get win the lottery, uh, get struck by lightning. data right for sure you can't make the same correlation is um, fact and correlation is is that there's an assumption but it's pretty obvious that you know for sure well being in the middle of the lake while it's lightning storming like if you took every single person who got struck by lightning and then analyzed their situation what that they put themselves in or they were in and was it avoidable Check. Wouldn't the Lakers chomp up the uh, rookies and Lakers? <laughs> Yo, you guys catch anything? Nothing? Yeah, these other guys that we talked to the other camp, they said there's, there's like supposed to be good Lakers in here too. Just a dick. We're getting pelted by hail right now. Oh man, look, you see the size of that one? I got hit with a, oh, I got hit in the hand with a good one. Stick your hand out, Jim. No. Oh man, I got, yeah, it hurts. Oh yeah, oh, look at that. That's big. Like That's crazy. really big. North, you smell like a wet dog. <laughs> Fucking Jim's fishing trip. You can get meat poisoning? Yeah, if you eat that by yourself. <laughs> Look, Look, how nice and it Look is, at the you know? marbling on it. Yeah. Mm. So this turned into a cooking show, not a fishing oh. show for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So she's like found this like no I, the bread was a farm boy and uh, the steak was also farm boy. Chop the farm boy. Real good. Man. Two full turkeys and like some dexter <laughs> beef. Spotlight. Oh, now you can see how <laughs> color on it though. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful fish. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what would I gotta like do? Like this, you know. <laughs> It's also is it stainless. The up? Is that right? Uh, do the same thing on the rock. You'll get it. I don't want it on the rock. <laughs> this storm is. I think it might be the real.
Tastes better than the stock ones for sure, you know? Oh, lost it. I saw it at least. It was a dink. Nice. Yeah, you're. Well, we uh, woke up this morning, decent enough time, got some coffees in us and hit the water. Pretty slow again, Brad lost one um, at then, you know, we were fishing for a while. You know, not, not quite as good here as what we thought it would be until Will just slammed a beauty, biggest fish of the trip so far. Uh, nice, nice uh, trout, so that's super exciting. So we're gonna put a little more effort here and see if we can uh, get another one. There we go. Nice boys. Nice Woo. Yeah. Yeah, Good job, Good Brad. Job, Brad. Kill it. Goose, what are your thoughts? Oh, feels good. Feels good. It took us a while to figure out this lake, but uh, we sort of found what we think is the honey hole and realized that the fish, just because of the heat yesterday, are deeper than normal for this time of year. But uh, yeah, we basically had to circumnavigate the whole lake and it, all the trout seem to be right around here, eh Will? All right, number two. Number two for Will, number three of the trip for Will. That's a, that, dude, that's better than the one I kept yesterday, for sure. That's decent, man. What, what were you doing there, Will? I'm just 
send out a little uh, love letter. Little maps. Oh, maybe maps two, map, map, maps one. Let's sink down to the bottom and then just jig them out of there. How uh, how long do you let it sink for after you cast land? I don't know, maybe like three seconds, four seconds. Three seconds, baby. I'll be hosting a TED talk. If anyone wants, you know, lessons on uh, how to slay out here in, Algon in Algonquin. Clothing optional. <laughs> <laughs> this is the spot, pretty much. Yeah. It's just got a tributary, it's got shallow that then drops off, tons of bait fish in the shallows. Yeah. The one more pass, always do one more pass. 75 passes later. Yeah, exactly. Two divorces later, you nail one. So much better that it started a little slower and then ended us a slam fest. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Just slowly pack up. Slit in the asshole. Right up the fins. Through the fins, I should say. Right to the top, then through. This little thing here. And then you grab this here and you pull out all the all the gills. Bam, look at that. And then you want to scrape out that bloodline there. So it was just like for like two, yeah. two days to a, or like a week. It was just like non. Yeah, same thing's happening with Pod. You could tell too. He's had a few podcasts, but like hammer day. He's like nervous about it too, right? Like he's like cautious. Is yours pulled way back? Yeah. How do we do this playing thing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes when there's three dogs, and even with horses apparently when there's three, they'll get in fights. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah good boy. You're playing with the boys and the girls. You like sucker punch in the ground. Yeah. Gotcha, bitch. Gotcha. See ya. Best footage of the trip by far. Yeah. By the way, I got some good footage of you guys. Uh, I got one of you guys landing the, in the net. Nice. Sweet. Right. <laughs> gently. Look at Gently. Ever so gently. Did Ray, did you notice Ray saw something weird on the portage trail on the way in on the right? Oh, that's what it was? That is it for us here. It was, it was not easy. We, we had to work for the fish we got, but... Uh, we did get some fish and some nice ones too. So in the end, we're happy with it. Uh, now we're gonna jump back into North T, um, which is from whence we came. Got a portage ahead of us and we're gonna uh, camp out on North T, chill and see if we can't get into any lake trout today. There are brookies there, but um, they get picked up by the bass that were likely not native. So they're, they're few and far between. But uh, yeah, we, we'll see, hopefully we find a good campsite adjacent to the deep water where there's lake trout. Uh, and that's it. We are wrapping things up. North is ready to go. Missed it. Hey, Come on over, here. over here, guys. Guys, that's the wrong place to go. Wow! <laughs> That's an impressive thing to get up. Yeah. Make like Touch a puppy again if you're around the young buck. Yeah. You go see. You go see. Maybe we shouldn't uh, be doing it. Well, at this time of year, the suckers run. So, sure enough, we pulled over at a little creek to check it out, and right off the bat, 
Will was able to catch a sucker with his bare hands after Ted caught one. Pretty cool. Just a shallow creek. They run right up. Watch the eggs. This is probably why they're breaking. Yeah, it's like the red color, eh? Yeah, they're called red suckers. Look, I need help. Renowned angler. Got it. Got it. In the back of the boat. I tried. Just open the back side. Just gently. I'm gonna need some new bay after this. Yeah. Like this, you can bring it on the boat. You're too small. Come on, man, get in there. Here we are at our next campsite, banged off the portage, out of the lake we were in, and really, really cool. We got a chance to check out a sucker run. Um, the suckers are running in the spring, and I'm not Your talking about. Still undone. I'm not talking about suckers like Brad, Ted, Will, and Ryan. <laughs> I mean sucker fish, not bottom dwellers. Um, Ball dwellers. I guess they are bottom dwellers. Anyways, yeah. So that was really cool. We saw a ton of those. And we made a pretty big crossing, fortunately, before the winds blew up. And we found an island campsite right in the middle of this big lake. Gorgeous, gorgeous campsite, lots of space. And we're just having a shore lunch with those delicious Ooh, trout we caught this morning. It's smelling amazing. Uh, Ryan's cooking up some sausages, so no shortage of food on this trip of uh, meat, fish, you, you name it. So awesome day. Bugs aren't bad here with the wind and being in the middle of the lake, so that's a plus. And it's also not as ripping hot as yesterday, which is really nice. So I got my tent set up um, and yeah, everyone's basically set up. So we're just gonna kick it, eat some food and then head out and try to see if we can't catch any lake trout in this lake this evening. Hopefully the winds die off too. I'll just cook everything. I literally caught it. Mmm. Mmm. So good, buddy. So good. No. So you know. <laughs> Get picked up. Yeah, I'm a monster. Jim and his like legs up the wall. Take it, take it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Mm. It's like a 
butter sandwich. It is like a butter sandwich. It's so good. How is it this good? It's just the best, man. How there's a, the reason, there's a reason you can't go to Loblaws and buy one of these. Right. Because there wouldn't be any left. No. There would be zero left. Mm. And also, they would never taste as good anyways. True. Mm. There's something to be said about earning it, too. Like, I think this is ready. Internally, you know. It is bug season right now here in Algonquin Park and across a lot of Canada. So I picked up something new for this season, the Thermosel MX90. What's a little bit different about this puppy, it's battery operated, so it doesn't run off propane and it's small, so it's compact. And what it does is it repels mosquitoes and black flies. Actually, I wanted to show it to you when it was a little buggier, but we're sitting here on an island on a big lake and there's ripping wind and there's literally no bugs. But uh, let me tell you, they can get bad and it's just gonna get worse for at least another month. So I'm gonna be super happy to have this. This is built for adventure and the toughest mosquito swarmed environments around. It's very portable as well. It's got a battery life, but it lasts for nine hours. Lanyard clip here which is great, weather resistance, and it works also at any elevation. This is the rechargeable refill, so it actually runs off a of liquid, which is a little di bit different than other thermocells. So, but these refills are compatible with any of this type of a thermocell device too. LED lights, let you know when it's working, and how much battery life it has, and how it works is you pop the top off, you squeeze this in here, you just pull this thing, out of there like that and then you take this here and you pop that right in there then you put the the top back on uh, this little part here goes in that little part there slick give her a slip through locks back in place look at that and then hold the button down and it'll start working and once it once it's up to temperature you see a little light come on here and the mosquito detracting wonderment comes out of the top here. And then you can also get a look in there to see how uh, much of the fluid is left. So when you need to get a recharge for it. These uh, cartridges last for about six hours, um, which is great. So um, perfect thing, honestly, to break out when you're cleaning fish, when you're doing buggy tasks, when you have your hands, uh, when you, both your hands need to be free and you can't swat at bugs meal times just any time you're getting eaten alive out here so this is probably about the best thing uh, you can break and we should be off the point of this island eh just move to the right here and we'll drift back in towards that yeah. Oh, it's got coffee in it. 
Is it gonna sit or something? Yeah. You could just like bottom, you know. Is that Yeti Yeti Mate two or no? No, it's a GS it's G. That uh wah wah meant goose, but really wee wee means snow goose. Or I don't know what Looks like you're going to the fire. Now got busted for the sec. Well, it is the morning of our last day here on this beautiful island campsite. Yesterday, incredible day. Uh, woke up early, got out there, slammed a bunch of trout. Um, had an epic uh, shore lunch when we got back here. Went out, fished again. Brad caught a burbot or a lingcod, uh, which we didn't keep because we had a ton of food. But uh, you know, they're weird looking fish, but they're super tasty. Um, a lot of people say I've actually never tried one. Uh, and it was Brad's first uh, burbot too, and it was a solid three and a half, four pounds, which is pretty exciting. Um, and great feed here over the fire last night as well. And we got an amazing view of the eclipse. We also saw um, a sucker run as well in a creek here. At this time of year, the suckers run and spawn in creeks. And we just saw hundreds of these big chunky suckers, which is really special um, because it's something a lot of people kind of don't see. So I've never really seen a sucker run in such shallow water. I've seen them running in deeper creeks. So that was super cool just to watch them spawn. But we kind of went in and we looked at them and we just let them be. We didn't want to disturb them too much. Um, and then to actually see the, the eclipse with a perfect shot from our campsite, perfectly clear, still night. Bugs weren't bad because the wind picked up and who knows, maybe that hot weather zapped the first crop of black flies, I hope so anyways. So that was amazing, good food, good buddies, good times. Um, now we're just packed up and we're loading the canoes and we're gonna head back out the way we came. Then that'll be about it. Strap the canoes on the roof and um, come back to Algonquin another time. Just amazing here, but for a small island, this is absolutely incredible. It's so high. And, uh, Mill and Ryan have a chance. Okay, boy, in the boat. Do you do a walk around? Go, go, go. Get the shot. Well, we've mostly been uh, catching the, the trout on MEP spinners. I was using a Black Fury uh, yellow dot and uh, copper colored MEP spinner. Will was using something similar as well, but now I'm gonna switch it up to this Williams Whitefish. Got a split shot sinker there, just so it goes deeper, because we're gonna be paddling faster than ideal trolling speed. And we're gonna see if we can't catch in any Lakers. Good cast right out there. Tuck my rod in like that under my seat. So if I get one, it pulls up and the reel gets caught against my seat and I can grab it in time to reel her in. Ideally I'd have my net right out here too, but. We're just gonna walk up this stream and fish. Stay. Stay. Good boy. <coughs> Norse is being a very good boy staying, but he sees Brad's dog Ray on the other bank. <coughs> well, that's all about North could take. And he swam across the river to go play with Ray. So gave it a pretty good effort. I got like a really strong hit. 
if it was a spec, it would have been a tank, but I saw the side of it and it looked like a bass, which is kind of strange because the males are kind of guarding their nests now, but uh, maybe a bass came up here. We're just basically walked up the river, up a little rapid and are fishing a bunch of little pools, trying to get into some probably what will be smaller size speckled trout. Oh, but that kept me going there for a bit longer. And I should have because uh, if it was a speck, it would have been by far the biggest one of the trip so far. That's exciting. I saw another fisherman down there who says there's specks kind of around here. So uh, that's exciting. Uh, anyways, yeah, I can see a few trails in here. So good place to go. Yeah, just kind of basically walking up a rapid and uh, casting in the pools midday so it's not really ideal but uh you know 100 times more likely to catch a fish when your line's in the water right we still got to do this portage though so um we might just bang that off and then uh try fishing again I didn't think there was much current going down this river until we had to come back up it and a lot of bends plus with all the rain the water levels come up a bit so uh, we're getting close but uh, yeah making us work a little bit harder just because uh, paddling against a pretty stiff current. Here we are, just pulling up at our put-in, where our trucks are parked. Another great trip in the books, a little challenging coming back up river, but no big deal. And I think it's safe to say this one's in the books. What do you think, Brian, safe to say? You're gonna tie up north. 